Hey guys, it's Akonasi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to continue working on my augmented reality application. I want to show you some of the features that I added, such as the ability to add text and also move text around. I can also add motions to text, which is basically the same implementation that I did online. So I'm going to show you some of the refactoring that I did as well and then show you what I plan to do on the next video. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you some of my recent changes on my AR application. So I'm going to launch the app like I actually recorded in my device. So you can see that I'm doing plain detection and I'm going to start drawing here. So I'm trying to draw a Christmas tree. So the lines are not as accurate because I haven't smoothed the line yet and this actually did the smoothness. This is another thing that I added. I added ability to add text in AR. I can walk towards text, I can move it around. So in these instances, I'm actually moving the text and I'm selecting the text and now I'm gonna change. And the changes are happening in real time. So you can see that I'm typing Merry Christmas. I'm going to, you know, I'm going out, going back in. I want to, in this case, you know, make the E lowercase so that the first letter of every word is capital and then the other ones are lowercase. And then I'm just gonna move it around just so that you know how that part works. The next piece is I can now add multiple texts as well. So if I wanna add another text, let's say I want to have a different phrase, I can do, you know, happy holidays, which is what I'm doing in this case. So this took a little bit of time to make it work. And the reason was because it, it's not only that you're doing it in, you know, in 2D, you also need to do it in, in 3D and, and it's in AR. So it adds a little more complexity. So right now I'm testing the snow and just to see how that looks, you can see how it's colliding with the plane. So that part it's working, moving around. And I'm going to try to, to do a different, I think in this case, I'm gonna do a different tree because that other tree doesn't really look good. I think this case was a star. That was the next thing that I was gonna draw. And there we go. And then I'm gonna show you, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is how we can do also rotation. I think I'm gonna to try to attempt to draw the star one more time. And then I'll show you how the motions work independently. So motions now work with the objects that I'm drawing and also with the text that I'm adding. And that's one of the cool things that I did for, you know, in the recent changes is I wanted to make the code work with both. And, and that's one thing that I'm gonna be showing you. So in this case, I added a Z rotation. I'm also going to draw another star, maybe a different type of star. I, I wanted to do a tree and then I ended up doing another star. And then you can see, I'm gonna change the mode here to be motion and I can apply motion. And now I'm gonna to try to see if I can apply the same thing, the same motions to the text. If I, if I remember correctly when I run it. Okay, I see. So in this case, I'm going to be, yeah, I'll show you what I'm doing here. I'm just going to add some messaging and then I'm gonna be drawing around. So this is an example of, let's say that you you forget or, or you want to put a note around your house and I add a note and then I just make a little, you know, a, li a little pattern so that it knows what I'm trying to indicate. Some cases you may wanna do that if you're, you know, if you're a mechanic and you want to, you know, tell somebody where to fix certain thing or to put certain part, you can do use AR for that purpose. I can also animate these ones. I can animate lines, I can animate text. So, and when I say animate, it's not really an animation, it's just a transition. These ones have a rotation transition. The This one right here as well. I'm also doing circular transitions and that's what I'm gonna show you in the in the demo today. And I'm also thinking about doing some different motions such as moving from left to right, right to left, up and down, and then some other ideas. So those are some of the changes that I added. Let me go ahead and go into the application now. So you can see that now I have these, this text box right here and this one is going to serve for the text that I'm adding. So if I go into the user interface and we look at all the different components, I try to keep everything very organized. So for instance, like if I go into my text options and we get in here, you can see that the text options is going to be, right now it's just a text box, but I'm gonna have different options such as changing the font size, changing the font style and so on. So if I go and look at the grab options that you can see here, I have some op options for deleting a line, duplicating a line, so I'm, I'm trying to keep things as consistent as I can in the hierarchy so that it makes the code and also the organization of these easier. So let me show you how I can run. So that's another thing that I try to do and 
And I said that on the previous video, I tried to make the tools as easy to test in the editor because it's really hard to test right now in AR, especially because there's not a AR remote. And if you watch my videos before, you know how much I want that feature to come because it's gonna make it easier for us to test. But for now, we're just, you know, encoding basically twice because I'm trying to make it work in the editor and also make it work in AR. So let me just show you some of the things that I did. So let's say that I want to, I'm going to show you uh, an experience that I would use this for. Let's say that I want to do a draw something for Christmas. So in this case, I would go in and, okay, I changed my brush size. I changed, say that I changed the color of the, of the line. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to draw a little Christmas tree here. And maybe we'll just do something like that and something like that. And I'm doing it with my touch pad, so it's not going to be perfect. So there we go. So we have a Christmas tree there. Let's say that we wanted to add a couple of stars around the Christmas tree. So we can do something like I can go here and I'm going to change this at mode. So these options, if, if I want to smooth the lines or not, I don't want to smooth them. So I'm going to keep them very simple. I'm going to make the, the line a little smaller. And that way we can, and, and since I'm going to take advantage of the editor, I'm going to go closer. And let's say that I draw a line here, and this is going to be actually a decoration. This one is going to be, you know, another decoration. And then we'll have another decoration here, and then perhaps another decoration here. We can now zoom, zoom all the way back. So we have a Christmas tree, right? And and we can do we can do a lot of things with this. But let's say that I go back and I say, well... I want to now add, you know, I now want to add a message so that I can I can show this to somebody or send it to somebody. So I can go here and then basically say, okay, I want to add a new text. And for some reason, the text is not showing correctly. And let me see why that is. And I think I, I think I introduced a bug by adding a feature recently. And yeah, because I can't really see, I can't really see the, the I'll have to fix that, but. Let's say that I add the text, and the text is here. For some reason, it's not adding it in the right place. But yeah, let me try that again. Yeah, it's adding, adding it to the wrong place. But let's say that I add these to, you know, to be right in front of the tree. And this is how it worked in AR. This is how I, how I show you that it was working. And I can go ahead and select it, and I can say, you know, Merry. I can say Merry Christmas, everyone. Christmas. It looks like I didn't select the one that was actually. So we can just move the Merry Christmas one, and I can just delete the other ones. I think I have an issue with the with the editor. That's okay. Who doesn't have issues, right? When you have when you're developing something. So say I move that, and then you know I have another option in here to change the size. And we do something like that. For now, I just have a color, a white color, and green is when I select it. If I click away, it's going to unselect it. So you can see how that actually unselect it, and then here I have the other text. So for some reason, it looks like it's working now, and it wasn't working before. But but anyways, you get you get the idea. Say I move this up, and this one is gonna say hi, or we can say this one is going to be happy holidays. And then on this other one, which I think is the one that I just yeah, this is the one that I just moved up. And let me see, you say hi on this one. Okay, so this one is happy holidays. This one is the hi, and then there we go. So this is a sample text. This one I'll just say, I'll say hi again, that's fine. So so now if I want to, let's say that I want to add some motions, I could go here and I can also add some motions. But in this case, I want to add motions on the Z axis. So I'm just gonna select that. I'm gonna select this one, select this one, select this one. And what if I wanted to also add motions to the tree? I could go in and change my motion here. And maybe I'll just do Y. And we can do you know something like that, or if I want to change the speed, I can go ahead and change it. Maybe make it make it much bigger, and we can just do, do something like that. And then, you know, if we want to add an effect to make it look more like Christmas time, we can also go into effects, and then add some snow. And and then you know we have a lot of different options in here. But the main thing that I wanted to emphasize today was the addition of the text. So I've been able to select text just like I, I'm doing right now and been able to change it in real time as we're running an, a, an AR experience. I can say, hello, amigo, or, or something like that. I could move it up here and I say, hola, and we can move it anywhere we want. So, so that's one of the features that I, you know, that I work on. 
it wasn't as easy because if you if you notice I can I have an offset now if I select that right here it was actually moving the pivot point to the selection of the mouse so I had to change the code to be able to you know to work with that I can also select it from the corner from this corner and then and then it works in you know in all ways so some of the things to keep in mind and you might have questions okay Dilmer you have you have an object that is a line you have an object that is a text how do you handle the code how do motions apply and that's what I want to what I want to show you today is how I handle motions so if we go here and we look at the text and specifically the one that if we look at the one that is actually so let's go ahead and animate say that we have motion to hello amigo and that way I can show you how the code works say we we move it let's go ahead and do I'm gonna do it uh, let's do this do this one and I'm gonna animate that I'm gonna animate this and also this so now we have motions on text we also have motions on the tree we have motions on the independent decorations that I have on the tree so they're all different objects so this is a text mesh which I'm using text mesh pro this one is a line render which I'm using you know the built-in line render that unity provides but they're different types of objects so so when it comes to rotating then you gotta you gotta be careful of how you do it and that's some of the things that I had to implement and make it in, in order to make it you know more more friendly for adding more features because I may want to add stickers in the future or I may want to add you know other type of obje objects and I want to make that code as easy as I can so what I want to show you is I'm going to show you the let's go ahead and open up go into assets open the c-sharp project and I'm going to show you a couple objects that I designed to be able to do that so what, I, what we're looking at right now is the grab manager I'm going to be looking at the AR object so I needed to determine you know if I'm an object was going to be selected or not so this is one of the base objects AR object you can set it whether it's going to be selected or not I can also set the color because some selection you notice that I had a green color associated with those objects so this is what's setting it right now I have it as default of red but on the inspector I'm setting it to green and then I also needed a public property that was going to allow me to to look at the color that was that was the selected color and then whether I want to you know I want I select you know when when I select what happens right this is a public virtual property so why did I make this protected I made it protected because this is going to be the parent of couple objects that I'm going to be using these properties on so if we look at the in AR line object this is an object that is inheriting from AR object I wanted to inherit from this object because I didn't want to have those properties so in this case I'm using an AR line object but in the other case I'm also using an AR text object and I may have an AR sticker object at some point or I may have you know any other type of object that I want to add where I'm going to be moving and I'm also going to be applying motion so that's how I can keep track of you know whether an object is selected or not and also changing the behavior of how the selector works because it's virtual it means that the the subclasses of that object are going to be defining the implementation of the selection so in this case I only had the you know have a private variable for default color this one is a text object so this has its own implementation for text mesh pro which means that I don't need to include it in the AR object the AR object doesn't need to know about the text mesh pro only the AR text object is going to know about it so that's what I added this one I didn't add it to AR object and let me let me go back I think I, I think I selected the wrong thing so let's go back into AR text object so so that's why the AR text object has this property the selector is a little bit different so I over I overwrote the implementation the AR object implementation was very basic so if we go and look at that one you can see that it was you know it's very simple it's, I set it to true and it gets set to true I set it to false it gets set to false so I need to do a little bit more than that so what I did here okay when, whenever you get set to true I'm going to also set the, the text color and whenever you get it set to false I'm going to set it to the default color so this allows me to say okay if you, if you set select it to true I'm going to set it to the selection color which is in, in our case is going to be green otherwise it's going to be changed to white which is the default color and then what you can see here that I'm initializing that and on the awake method I just get a reference to text mesh pro and I also have a component here that allows me to get that component back so this is basically a getter so if we look at the AR line object it's a little bit different still the same the same you know same similar implementation but if we go back here I think I just noticed that I need to do oh okay I think I'm doing something here that I might not need to do but that's okay 
I have this motion type on the AR line object, which I don't believe I need, but looks like it's getting it's getting used. It's only getting used by the same object here. So I am pretty sure we don't need it. So I'm gonna get rid of it. And then if we get any an issue, then I'll know that I have to put it back. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not using it. That's why I'm keeping AR object as pure as I can because the way that we're going to be animating these through motions is going to be a little bit different. I'll show you that code as well. So this one is similar. I have, I have instead of having one default color, I have two default colors. That's why the implementation is in this object, not on the parent. And the reason why I have two is because a line render has a star line and also a star width and also a end width and also a star color and an end color. So it needs two properties. It also has a line render, which the AR text object doesn't need. So that's why this one has a private variable that defines the, the line render reference. And then the same thing here, I overwrote the selected method. And whenever I set it to true, I set the colors, which are gonna be the selected color. And then whenever selected is set to false, I set the default color. And of course I set the property, the setter as well on that property. And then on the awake method, I, I basically set the default start and end, which is gonna be Y. And I get a reference to the line render and then I have a couple of methods for updating the colors and also for getting the line render back, which looks like I'm not even using, so I might, I might be okay. Let's go ahead, and, let's go ahead and get rid of it because I'm not using that one on the text object or in the or in the AR line object. So I think that was one of my initial implementations, and then I decided to change how that works. So now you know about the AR object, the AR line object, and also the AR text object. So how do I apply a motion? And and that's the next piece I have. Another object that is called the, the, the motion manager is going to be more of the one that is applying the motion, but I also have what's called a motion. So let me go ahead and go into the, let's see if I can find it here. For some reason, I don't see it. So I'm gonna go into the motion manager and show you, and show you how I do that. So if I go to apply motion, I think I'm missing and apply motion uses the AR motion and a motion type. Let me go back. And here. And this one, okay, so this is just an AR motion. For some reason, I thought I had an AR motion object somewhere. And maybe, oh yeah, yeah, I do. I think I just put it on the wrong location because it was, it was really throwing me off. So this should probably not live under UX. This should probably just move. And that's what I'm going to do right now. It's not a manager, it's not a model. In a way it's a model, but it's a behavior. So what I'm gonna do is, so it gets really complicated, right? Whenever you're creating code and you wanna make sense of things. So, oh, and I, I see, okay. So it's actually in the right location, UX, only has the, the fade plane on boundary change, and then everything here, so it is in the right location. Okay, so, so what is AR object motion? And that is basically the object that is responsible for updating motions on the, on the components that I show you, either the AR line or the AR text object. So in this case, I am I'm using an enum. So if I go into my enum here of the implementation, you can see that I'm using an idle motion, a rotate X, Y, or Z, circle X, Y, and Z. And this one I haven't used yet, and I'm gonna be implementing that next. But this basically defines what the motion type is gonna be. And if I go into the editor, I'm gonna show you how that looks. So let's go back here. I'm going to I'm going to just add a motion and then we'll go back to the code. So let's hit play here. I'm going to let's go ahead and just add some text. And if I can get the text to show, it looks like I do have an issue. Okay, so we'll just put the text right, I think right here, it's fine. So let's say that I add the text there and then we go here. And I change the I change the motion, which is going to be let's say that I do this one right. So that one is animating. If we go here and we look at the object, I have a AR text object, which is the object that we're looking at. But I also have an AR object motion. It has a speed. If I increment the speed, you're gonna see how it's going to start animating quicker. Quicker. I can also do a radius, but this only applies to circle motion, so it wouldn't do. It's not gonna do anything in this one. But if the the movement type was circle, then the radius would apply. Also the space, the, this can define whether it's gonna be world space or cell space. So that's how the air motion gets basically defined, which is defined here. And what I do is I say, okay, if it's rotate X, I'm going to, I'm going to use the rotate, the transform rotate. 
if it's if I'm using a circular motion, then I'm gonna use you know I'm gonna use cosine and sine to do a rotation, and then the other motion I haven't defined it yet, I haven't implemented it yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that piece. So that's what AR object motion is. It's just the one that is responsible for applying the motions, and then the motion manager, all it is doing is right now I I need to refactor this, but currently it's doing the selection of the objects. It does a ray cast once it finds the object and then, then it applies a motion. The way that it applies a motion is by this method. I pass in the air object. So this is why I kept these two, you know, inherit from one class because I didn't want to define, okay, if it's an AR line, line object, do this. If it's a AR text object, do this. It's, it makes code really complicated if you do it that way. So instead of doing that, what I did is I, okay, I'm going to define a parent class that it's going to, it doesn't really matter what type it is. It's just going to be the base, right? It's going to be, an AR object. I'm going to get all the AR objects on the screen. Once I have one selected, I'm going to disable them if they're not the one that I'm currently selecting. Otherwise, I'm going to set the one that I'm selecting to select it, and then I'm going to apply the motion based based on the on the options that I have that I have already selected, which are going to be selected by by this class. So that's how that works, and that's how I can apply motions to you know to text and also motions to to the actual line render if I wanted to do you know, something like this, and then I could apply motions like that. So that's everything that I wanted to show you today, guys. Just keep in mind that I'm going to be doing more videos like this. If you find these videos helpful, please let me know in the comments because that really it's going to help me in knowing, you know, what to do next for the videos. Thank you very much, guys. All right, guys, thank you much for watching today. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about anything that I just showed you on my progress about my application, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.